let's just give it 10 years. Is it gonna double again? Does it mean that this bag is gonna be almost $6,000 then? Especially the ones at a lower price ranges, such as the Speedies, the Speedy Bandoulière. So now the question begs, where I don't have any collections and I'm just getting started, would I go ahead and try to get my hands on it as soon as possible? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Amy. And if you don't know already, this Never Full of Mine is quite old. I bought this one in 2000. 2015, so I have several videos about this bag. So if you're looking for a comprehensive review, including the version that is my world tour because I had both of these. I'm gonna link my playlist up here. They are older videos so I might look a little younger back then but regardless they are still very very comprehensive videos. So apparently some people thought at least on social media were saying that it was gonna get discontinued. Now I didn't think that would be possible because the Neverfull just like their Speedy is such a classic. The good news is that it's not actually getting discontinued so don't panic just yet however it won't be available to purchase online anymore so you would have to purchase it in store and there's gonna be a wait list in this video I'm gonna discuss my thoughts whether I would go ahead and just buy one as soon as possible if I didn't already have one in Canada they're no longer available to purchase online so you only can buy it in store the fact that for a few years now LV has been pushing a lot of their leather goods or bags in general that are made of leather, so the more expensive versions, instead of their canvas pieces. And in fact, they have been limiting a lot of their canvas pieces in general, so I could see this coming in a way. Although the decision to make this into a waitlisted bag, which kind of reminds me of how the Hermes quota system is, because basically, if you don't know, at Hermes, if you want one of their coveted bags, even the non-quota bags nowadays, because all leather goods are really really hard to obtain now. In general, Hermes and Chanel bags have never really been easy to obtain anyway. Uh, they might have been easier in the past but now it's just a lot about the relationship that you have with your essay and with your store and how much shopping activities you've been doing with your shop. That's how the luxury stores or the luxury brands have been moving towards in terms of marketing model, I feel. So LV following their footsteps is kind of not really a surprising thing, although it is a bit shocking because LV has always been known as the stepping stone or a very great starter brand. For me personally, when I get Louis Vuitton bags, I generally prefer to get their canvas pieces because that's what they're known for. I don't really care that people see this bag as being too common, too basic, uh, too loud, all of those things because to me this is definitely the most classic of LVs um, in addition to the Speedy but I prefer the, the taupe version of course. So let's revisit some of the history of this bag and also maybe some of the reasons my own thoughts on why LV has decided to go this direction. The Neverfull was debuted in 2006. Yes, it's a while ago. And at the time, it was also just available on waitlist. I personally didn't start buying LV myself until 2008. And my first bag from LV was not a monogram or canvas piece. My first bag was actually a leather piece. It was the Alma PM size in AP leather. I didn't start buying their canvas pieces until the following year, so 2009. And that's when I bought my first Speedy, the Speedy 25, the regular version. I remember that the Neverfull at the time was available and they were about the same prices, the Neverfull being maybe 50 bucks more or something like that. It was very, very close and it was around the $700 mark. That's the price in Canada at the time, and so plus taxes on top of that. So probably roughly 700 something, you would have been able to get this bag in 2009. Fast forward a few more years, because I actually didn't get the Neverfull until 2015. That's like six years later, which is a long time, but not so long, and even then, the Neverfull has already doubled in price because by then, in 2015, when I bought this bag, it was, 
I think it was like 1400 something plus taxes. So it basically doubled in price since the first time that I remembered this bag. And then of course from 2015 till now, another eight years later, this bag is almost double the price of back then. Almost, almost. Because right now this particular one, this particular size, the MM size is 2580 Canadian plus taxes. So it's about shy of $3,000 if you live in Quebec. But you get the idea is that the prices have been steadily going up very, very quickly. And we're talking about doubling the price. So 100% of the price has increased over the few years, not even a decade yet. And yet everyone is still buying these luxury bags. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just what it is. The luxury market has really skyrocketed, become so popular. And unlike inflation, their prices keep increasing a few times a year, sometimes 10, 20% at a time, especially with salary raises. They haven't caught up that fast, not to the not to the speed of luxury price increases, that is for sure. So the question begs, is it still worth it and should you get it? On the other hand, you might be also thinking, if you don't get it now, when would you get it? Because if you look at the trend and me personally with this bag, having missed out in 2009 and only buying it in 2015 and now fast forward eight more years to today, if I were to buy this bag today, I would have almost paid double what I paid back then. Does it mean that in another eight, nine years, let's just give it 10 years, is it gonna double again? Does it mean that this bag is gonna be almost $6,000 then? That would be insane, right? Hopefully it doesn't get this crazy, but you never know. You just never know. We never saw Chanel price increases go by 30% in 2020. And apparently there's gonna be another price increase for the classic flops in September, so. You just never know what's going to happen. Who knows if they're going to add more canvas products, especially the ones at a lower price ranges, such as the Speedies, the Speedy Bandoulier. Apparently, the Neverfull is just them testing the waters on how this whole waitlist system is going to work out. Is that the direction of the company where they're trying to elevate their overall luxury status to be more on par with Chanel and Hermes? Or are they just trying to control the market so that it's not so saturated with a lot of canvas products? Not all of them, obviously, but a lot of the more introductory prices especially at the time, were great starter pieces. LV was known as a great brand to kind of step into the world of luxury and me included. Because it's more price friendly in general compared to other brands, more people are buying it. So there is also a lot more of the pre-loved secondhand market pieces available from people moving on from their pieces. So is that what they're trying to control? One thing is for sure is that with advances in technology, social media, and how fast information travels nowadays, people's behavior creates this chain reaction, which affects a lot of the brand's sales and bottom lines, and also just the direction of how people's behaviors are. Probably not because they want to discontinue the product, really, because it's a great product and they should have it. It's a classic, but probably just because they don't want to oversaturate it. And that makes a lot of sense. So what is the end goal of not oversaturating the market? Well, exclusivity. By making their products more exclusive, it attracts more people or it kind of makes people want to buy something that is rare because it is totally in human nature to feel like if you're missing out on something that you really need to work harder at getting it. The fact that they're making you having to buy this bag in store is also an opportunity to keep you as a client for all their other things in store. So basically it's like pre-spending but not really, but kind of, you know, like as a client, especially if you want to get on the good side of your essay, who is putting you on a wait list, for example, they are probably inclined to suggest other things that you might like. And so far it's been proven to be a really great model because if you just look at Hermes, it is totally working. Obviously, unless you're just set on like one thing and one thing only, you're probably not gonna buy their other stuff just to get the bag. But I would say most people who get into luxury, even if they're just tippy-toeing and starting from scratch, 
it's just something that they might end up doing anyway because they're gonna end up falling in love with a lot of other things and then eventually when it's their turn they're gonna get their bag i think we can all agree that if someone is just getting into luxury right that lv is a great place to start even today even though this bag already is quite expensive today but it's all relative right we all have to start somewhere personally speaking when i bought my first bag I didn't buy my next bag until a year later and then I didn't buy my third bag until a few more years later. Over the years I've started collecting their other stuff such as their accessories. Even though it takes a while for certain clientels or a certain type of clients to uh, start building a more heavy shopping profile, it is definitely still in their interest to do so from a business standpoint because they probably don't want people to just buy a bag and then just never come back, right? They want them to stay a client for a while and buy a bunch of their different products. So now the question begs, right? Like if I were in a position today where I don't have any collections and I'm just getting started and I have my eyes on the never full, would I go ahead and try to get my hands on it as soon as possible? Basically get on the wait list. And in the process, I might end up having to buy different things. I've given some thoughts to this, especially knowing what I know now, whether I would go ahead and just try to get my hands on one as soon as possible. And the answer is yes, I would. Essentially for me, if I'm set on a bag and I still have this bag after all these years, right? Even though I don't wear big bags very often. But if I'm set on a particular style and the Neverfull being a very good, in general, tote style that is very simple construction wise, but it's signature and it has a certain look that you cannot achieve with other bags. I'm already set on this design. If I decide not to get this one and find an alternative, I will always be second guessing myself. If I just got myself on this wait list and just bought it, even if it cost $3,000 today, that it would have been my best handbag collection investment. Not monetary investment, but from the standpoint of my collection, it would have been my best investment because an alternative of this would not satisfy my deep, deep, deep desire. Although some people will argue that, you know, they prefer other totes since this one is too simple, doesn't have a zipper, has a thin strap, all these things. You cannot deny that the look that it gives you is this classic look that you just, you just can't get with any, any other alternatives. You cannot deny that. Like every other bag, there are pros and cons. Let's talk about price, right? That's probably one of the biggest cons right now. Seeing that this canvas bag, I could have gotten it back then a long, long time ago for 700, but we can't go back in time. That is the thing. You cannot look back that way and always say, oh, if I had gotten it back then, right? You cannot. Well, this is your chance to get it if you don't have it already and if you're just starting from scratch right now. Like I said, if your heart is set on something, in my case, I've experienced it many, many times. If I'm set on something and if I decided not to buy it because of whatever reason that is, usually it's due to pricing or unavailability, then I always regret it at the end. So. Although this one is not going to be completely unavailable, it's just harder to get nowadays. I wouldn't let the price deter me because it is a one-time cost and it will be worth it if you have your heart set on it. So just do your research, watch a bunch of videos and decide for yourself. Maybe try it in store if, you, if it's possible even, I don't know. Um, then, then, then make that final decision to either get it or forget about it. I've had my fair share of trying alternatives and it's not the same. Obviously with Longchamp, it's an even more entry level branding, but it has nothing to do with the branding. It's more just a general aesthetic and the way it performs. It's also the material, it's all of that and just because you want it. Yes, there are a lot of alternatives, don't get me wrong. And if an alternative is what you prefer, then go for it. But if you have your eyes set on the Neverfull because of all those reasons and more, then you should go for the Neverfull. Even though I don't wear this bag all the time, it doesn't mean that I love it less. And even though I do own other totes that functionality wise can be very similar, it's still not gonna replace it totally. But there are days where I prefer to wear Longchamp. Sometimes having a variety in your collection is what you want and need as well. The debate is still gonna be polarizing. There's gonna be a lot of big fans of the Neverfull and there's also gonna be a group of people who are not, which is fine. You can be either. At the end of the day, you have to make that decision yourself whether to pursue it or not. 
the way I see it is it's the same story basically, right? Same with Chanel, same with Hermes. Everything has gone up so high, but if you don't get it now, when are you gonna get it? And that is the point. It's always been the point. So regardless of this bag getting discontinued, on the basis of wait lists, I think if you don't have it already and you're ready to buy it, get on that wait list and get it now or get it pre-loved, of course. Personally, I have a preference for buying pre-loved for things that are more on the excellent to brand new condition. So if it was just owned by someone, but they haven't used the bag a whole lot, such as mine. For example, if I were to buy this one pre-love, I would be so happy to buy this one pre-love. In any case, I think if you're still unsure, take your time, just don't rush it. Unless you already know that you're set on this bag, then yes, go and get it. But if you don't know yet, don't rush it either. At the end of the day, there's, gonna be a slew of different opinions out there and you have to still make your own decision just based on everyone's feedback. Because personally speaking, if I had listened to my friends in general about this bag, I would never have bought it because none of them like it. I think one of my friends likes it and that's it. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what other people think and what everyone thinks about whether this bag is too basic and all those things does not matter because what matters is how you style yourself and what you wear with the bag and how you carry it. So at the end of the day, it's all up to you. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I also do a weekly live stream every Friday and you can also join my membership. That's it for today. I'll talk to you guys in the comment section. Bye.